So we're going to get started. Some big business news broke over the weekend. McDonald's CEO Steve Easterbrook was fired after it came out that he broke company rules by dating an employee. This is someone who is said to have turned the company around. He was called the best CEO in the restaurant industry. So should managers always be banned for consensual, this was consensual, relationships with employees? What do you think? It's kind of a mix, no? Mostly no? Well, do you want to go to Facebook first? Amy says, even if it's consensual, it's not a good idea for a superior to have a relationship with their subordinate. There's already an imbalance in power, and it can lead to all kinds of abuse, scandal, corruption, and coercion. I can understand why companies have policies against this. Mm -hmm. And I, I tend to agree with Amy. It's, you know, it, the problem, and part of the thing that Me Too has brought a light to, is this kind of power imbalance and how women often can feel that even if someone is, is their superior, and maybe it starts off as friendly banter, that eventually if it moves into something else that you cannot say no because when you do say no is your job in jeopardy and that's the problem so I think it's smart for companies to have these policies having said that I mean then I could go into like a real life situation like if I was my, myself right now and I was not married and I started a job and I and I found my boss really attractive like I feel like a very confident woman I feel very secure in my job so if I was attracted to my boss and then the company policy was saying we couldn't get together. What would you do? I don't know! <laughs> what would you do? You'd have to put your big girl pants on and, and quit? say no. Would I have no. to quit? I would have no. to quit. Well, what would happen? Well, listen, I'm just you're curious. You're super like, talented. Let's role play this Let's out. role play it. OK, you're my boss. You're my boss. I'm the boss. And I say, Cynthia, you know, you look amazing in your lavender suit. Thank I really you. think that we should go out for a drink tonight. I would love that. I'm totally hot for you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Here's the thing, let me fast forward. We start dating, but then we break up. What happens then? Oh, you're right, okay, so fine. So let's, let's put this on the back burner and you look for other work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, our viewers online are weighing in, okay? Uh, this viewer says, this is an old backward practice that should have been abolished a long time ago. We meet people in all parts of our life. Discretion is needed for sure. Let me throw out a couple names, okay? Michelle and Barack Obama. Bill and Melinda Gates, they all met at work. All of them, right? So with Bill and Melinda Gates, Melinda started at Microsoft. She walked in. Uh, she, I think, gave a presentation. Bill noticed her. And you know what? What a power couple they are. Not only are they a power couple, they give back, mm -hmm. right? The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation gives some $50 billion to, you know, Does different matter? right around the world. Like they're amazing. Like yeah. We cannot deny the good they've done in the world, but I wonder if timing matters a little How bit. So? Because Microsoft, when they started dating, was not the Microsoft that we know today. In other words, like, was there so much of a power difference? I mean, I don't know the answer, he but I know- He was still the boss. She, he was still the yeah. boss, but she, it was the early days of my, it was still a startup. You know, so you wasn't think that's like better? The, that's and okay. so I mean, she did. He wasn't the billionaire Bill Gates that we all know. And the other argument could be made that maybe she helped him become that billionaire. Yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe, yeah. Yeah. maybe. Yeah. I, I will say, if I may, with just it, with regards to age, um, the other I love all of those examples that you showed, but the other one that we, the famous example we all know that. I'm always curious to see how we would cover it in 2019 is Bill Clinton, and he was in the most powerful office in the planet and was impeached because of his affair with the then 22-year-old Monica Lewinsky. That story in 2019 would have been covered completely differently than it was in 1996. Back then, she became, well, her entire life was wiped off the earth because she was pictured as like some homewrecker intern who wanted to like, you know, climb on the president, right? Like this is how she was portrayed. But we, what we now know today, and she is even acknowledging is, you know, we say it was a consensual affair, but could it ever be consensual when someone has that much power over me? And she's starting to realize she was a kid, and this maybe was not consensual in the way that we understand in 2019. And I got to say, I feel bad for the way that everyone treated Monica, even the way that I probably talked about Monica in 1996. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like your suggestion, though. Like, I like your, your play suggestion where you were dating the boss and you came to an impasse and you're like, okay, then you quit and yeah. I'm going to keep my job. <laughs> That's right. Because <laughs> this is kind of what happened with McDonald's, right? He was removed. Um, he and made he was something, doing well. He was doing well. 
which means he's not gonna have a hard time finding another job, right? Like, he made $16 million a year. He was known as the best CEO, uh, restaurateur CEO. So his opportunities are more vast than the person who's lower down. In the past, when these things happened, it was the superior, more often than not, the woman who'd have to vacate their position and go do something else. I, I love this. Like, he's like, I have lots of opportunities, plus if I don't work another day in my life again after making $16 million over five years, that's cool. She can stay at McDonald's and I'll just go to the beach. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Like, here's the other thing here, though. We spend, we spend a lot of time working, right? Like, so this is what, like, if you're dating or trying to date right now, where else are you meeting people? No, it's true, but the thing is, is that you, when there is a power imbalance, you gotta get really good at reading signals. And I think that you have to defer to the person who is um, on the lower on the totem, uh, lower the subordinate. on the subordinate. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, is that that person needs to be sending like super like beacon, like setting off firecrackers. I don't think that the person who's in the position of power can be the one who initiating. is initiating. Yeah. I think that you can get into all kinds of trouble that way. Mm -hmm.